Norfolk State University for the right of the MEAC title, the right to play in the subdivision playoffs, and their right to make history. Game. I think we uh, did a great job being prepared uh, all week. We studied their film, we knew the strengths and weaknesses of their offense, of certain players, um, you know, special teams. We feel like we could dominate them. Uh, it all came down to going out and executing. With both teams ready for battle, the intensity was like no other. Here we go! Hey! Go be great! As the game began, the Hornets started off as the day did, cold. While the Hornets came out cold, the Spartans came out hot. Using their run pass attack, the Spartans jumped out to a demanding 14 to nothing lead. As the first half continued, so did the Hornets' misfortune. Although they struggled, the Hornets found themselves only down 14 points at halftime. This is what we're all about. This is the gut and the core of what we're all about. You've got to believe, and you've got to act upon that belief every second, every play. We go out, we kick off, we knock the ball loose, got to stop, take the ball, go down and score, we're right back in the game. When the second half began, so did the hopes for the fans and for the Hornet football team. The Hornets sustained a 12-play drive that resulted in a Peter Gardner field goal. Just as it seemed as though things were swinging in the Hornets' favor, the Spartans dropped a bombshell on the Hornets' dreams. On Norfolk State's next possession, quarterback Casey Hansen found tight end Dexter Bailey all alone behind the Hornets' secondary for a 61-yard completion. Two plays later, Daryl Jones maneuvered his way into the end zone for what looked to be the nail in the coffin. And we didn't do we didn't do that in the first half. We didn't execute. Matter of fact, we didn't do it for the first three quarters. I think they beat us. Um, in every area of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. They said when it rains, it pours, and the Hornets were drowning, especially after the Hornets fumbled the ensuing kickoff. But the Spartans got greedy as they went for the long ball. Instead, they got Akeem Green and Reggie McCoy as they forced Hanson to cough up the ball. The Hornets and Spartans exchanged possession as the third quarter came to a close. The fourth quarter began with time running out, and without their star player going down with an ankle injury on this punt return, the Hornets and their hopes of being MEAC champions were slim to none. Now, we certainly did not anticipate getting behind, you know, 21-3 with eight minutes to play. But I think the fact that our team uh, continued to fight back and create turnovers and uh, displayed a type of perseverance and uh, that had really been on display uh, not only during this season but the previous year. But slim was all the Hornets needed. Delaware State received the ball on their own 19-yard line, down 21 to three, with just over 11 minutes remaining in the game. But quarterback Fashad went and showed his composure as he led the Hornets down the field with the help of wide receivers William Griggs, Octavius Everett, and running back Kareem Jones. The Hornets marched down to the six-yard line when Norfolk State called timeout. That gave time for Shaheem McBride to sneak back into the game. I mean, I had to punch about the same size hill. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. And with McBride in the game, everyone knew where the ball was going. I mean, the goal line she was for either side. I mean, I didn't think I would be able to get off the line. I mean, you know, my ankles were hurt, so I didn't really think I'd get off the line. So I had, you know I mean, so instead of me trying to juke him, I had to grab him and throw him. Now, down 21 to 10 with eight minutes remaining. The Hornets needed a stop, and they needed it fast. But the Spartans were determined to run some time off the clock. The Hornets finally forced a punt, but there was only four minutes on the clock. But on their second play of the drive, Derek McNeil made the big time play in the big time game. Oh, 
in the beginning of the play, I knew that, you know, it was going to be a big time play because that's, that's like been a big time play for me all season. So when that play was actually called, you know, I felt some type of relief. I felt like, you know, here's a chance for me to make a big time play when we really need it. The Hornets scored on their next play and being down 21 to 16, they were forced to go for the two point conversion. The Hornets would fail on a pass attempt to McBride but a pass interference call gave the Hornets another opportunity. Delaware State decided to put the ball in running back Adam Shrewsbury's hands as he went right up the gut. But the Spartans defense presented a problem, so he found a way around it. The Hornets looked to make one of the dramatic comebacks, but there was a problem. Tom was running out and they needed the ball. So the defense put the team on its back and forced a three and out, capping it off with a sack by defensive lineman Joe Mendez. And just like that, the Hornets had one more chance to win the battle and ultimately the war. Are you ready to go? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 30 yards. I'm ball. Hey, Philly Cheesecake, stay on side. The Hornets had one minute and 54 seconds to operate. So the two-minute drill began. Winton found LaRon Moore for a first down and quickly stopped the clock. Eight plays and two first downs later, the Hornets would call on kicker Peter Carter with only three seconds left to show how pressure doesn't bust pipes. We have been put in uh, positions like that in games before, you know, South Carolina State, Winston-Salem, uh, Morgan, you know, games like that. So uh, we trained ourselves, you know, to play four quarters. So I think we were more accustomed to uh, being in that position in the fourth quarter than they were, and we showed that we can handle that situation better than they did. With Peter's game dying field goal that forced overtime, the teams were called to midfield to determine how to settle this epic battle. The Spartans won the toss and decided to give the Hornets the ball first. The Hornets decided to keep the ball on the ground, and with this run by McNeil, the Hornets had a first down. The Hornets decided to keep the ball on the ground for their next two plays and found themselves faced with a third and goal. I ran on the field. I'm like, what's the play? They told me what the play was. I'm like, what play is that? You know what I'm saying? Because you know, I'm just an ultimate, really. I just go on offense for the goal line package. And I thought about it, I said, oh, that's my play. You know what I'm saying? So, I really get a chance to think about it, so I really get a chance to get nervous. <laughs> Made that one little stick, hit that outside, seen the ball coming, everything was like, took like 10 days to get there. Once it got there though, I ain't let it go since. With that touchdown, the Spartans had to score a touchdown to force another overtime. The Spartans leaned on their star quarterback, but with three straight incomplete passes, the Spartans were left with a fourth down and 10. As Hansen dropped back, Akeem Green came on a blitz and down went Hansen and the Legion of Green and Gold. And the celebration began. On November 10th, 2007, the Delaware State Hornets dream of becoming the MEAC champions became a reality. This is what we live for. We live for this. How about that ring, baby? We got it! We got it, baby! President Alan Sessom's dedication towards athletics and the decision to choose Al Levan to lead the football team proved to be a great one.